today we have psychic medium and spiritual teacher, Mary Ann DeMarco. Mary Ann is an internationally recognized public medium, author, healer, and spiritual teacher. And she's here, here to share principles from her new book, Medium Mentor, 10 Powerful Techniques to Awaken Divine Guidance for Yourself and Others amazing book. <laughs> Marianne, thank you for being here and joining us. It's such an honor to have you here. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. I feel blessed to be here. Well, Marianne, let's talk about your journey because in the book, you talk about how in your mid thirties, you had these several like little mini life crises, you called them, and it led to you awakening and discovering a different side of yourself. Can it's you so are good. really leaning into that side of yourself? I guess we would say. I had been uncomfortable for a lot of years mm -hmm. and that discomfort started to swell and it resulted in uh, things that happened in my life that really were very unexpected, like a divorce. And I had two small children and I was, you know, trying to focus on that and, and raising them. And then I experienced a uh, grief in the middle of all of that. We lost my father-in-law and that was really tough and hard. Sorry. We were very close. Yeah. And it, and it was this very uh, unraveling moment that I didn't expect. And I wound right. up in the hands of a spiritual teacher, Pat Longo, who said to me, you know, I give classes. I thought she was a psychic medium. I thought I was going to go get a psychic reading. And I really could have used one at that time. I was <laughs> right. like, woo, I need a psychic. Tell me what the heck is going on. We've all been and, there. <laughs> oh yeah. And I wound up in this talking to her on the phone, making the appointment. And I thought, oh, I was talking to her as if she was a psychic. And she said, oh, I'm not a psychic. I teach people how to do this. And oh. I thought, oh, and very automatically I say, I, I said out loud, I think I'm supposed to see you now. And I wound up uh, taking classes. And this is something that I've known that I could do my whole life. It was just up, up to that moment, I realized this was the divine timing of when it was supposed to officially start. The divine timing. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's almost like you were ready and the universe knew and you just met up with that right person. Uh, tell us a little bit more about how you feel that people are collectively waking up right now. Uh, that was so interesting. Yeah. When I wrote the book, when I went to go write this book, I didn't know if I was going to write another book, but I kept hearing, let's wake them up. Let's put, let's put this down on paper. And then people around me were asking, are you going to write another book? You know, you should write another book. So a common theme, which spirit loves to give. And I realized that the theme of it all was that people were really, it was over pandemic and people were really sitting with themselves Mm -hmm. The veil is getting thinner and thinner, so to speak, between us and sort of that spiritual realm. And the curiosity was getting heightened because people were forced to go inward and try and hear their own guidance in a very mm -hmm. strange time. And, and to me, that was part of, you know, everybody's talking about this sort of shift that's been going on energetically. And I think it was just divine timing again in that moment. And I thought, okay, these are the tools of, that they're asking me to give over. And I happily did so. And writing this book was a joy. It was really um, like such a flow and a joy and just the people around me, everything just fell into place beautifully. Well, it is a wonderful book and you've gathered some of your most valuable tips that you offer to your students and you've put them all into this book for people who are interested in learning more about their innate intuition, developing their own gifts, which is amazing and wonderful. So will you talk to us a little bit about developing your intuition for everyone who's so curious about that? Yes, there's a lot of confu confusion about what your intuition sounds like. And your intuition is really your inner knowing, your own psychic ability, which we all have access to if we choose learning to trust it and then having it eventually become instinctual that you just know the flow of your intuition and you recognize your own chasing or your own resistance when you're in your physical mind mm -hmm. and practicing that consistently will help sharpen that tool, your inner knowing your intuition. Uh, I always say, if you can remember what hindsight feels like, Oh, I knew I should have done that. I thought yes. I, oh, I knew that was good. That's sort of that inner knowing. If you can get ahead of that, wouldn't that be wonderful? And then you tie in the guidance of what you're feeling from your guides. You're, we all have spirit guides on the other side, plus our loved ones and angelic figures, whatever it looks like for you. And we can hear that guidance helping us tap into our answers. Now you've got a good flow going on. I love that. I love that. And we 
we have, like you said, we have access to these guides, these angels, whatever mm -hmm. we want to particularly tap into. And I think it's so amazing to learn more about that. And you give several tools you talk about, like you said, trusting it. Um, will you tell us more about learning to trust it, letting go of that ego resistance? Because I think that's a big one for all of us. I know it is for me. Yeah. You have to sort of surrender over to the fact that you're worthy to receive this information, that you are the light, that you're part of all of this, that spirituality, higher vibration frequency change, manifesting, that that is not something that's outside of ourselves, that we are actually uh, infinite with that energy. We are part of it. And when you realize that and you trust that higher power, that source, whatever it looks like for you in your own authentic way, it becomes pr pretty evidential. The validations are overwhelming and you see yourself working with spirit because they're happy to show you in a really obvious way how this all works. To me, that is like the biggest, uh, not reward, but I'm always in awe of how spirit can work. And when you learn to do that, you will trust more. And that ego, although will show up, mm -hmm. did I get it right? Oh, yes. What if I'm wrong? What if I, uh, you know, what if I'm not doing it correctly? I don't know. I don't know. It will always show up, but we start to recognize it differently. And then we get to work with it. Now we're like, all right, I see you ego. I see what you're trying to do but I'm yep. going to counteract this with my trust and my confidence and knowing that I'm worthy to do this work. Yes. Yes. I think that awareness is so important and good to try to keep in the forefront of our mind. Cause that ego is very tricky. It will tricky, pop up. Tricky. Yes. Tricky, tricky. tricky. Clever, <laughs> clever, very clever. So your story and your life, I mean, it's so fascinating. I kind of want to go back to talking about you and asking some questions about uh, you give this example in your book, about the pizza story and how you receive messages. I think that is so interesting and I could relate to that too. So will you tell us about that and like knowing which messages are yours, which messages are for others? My mediumship ability, psychic ability, when I'm doing it for somebody else is really an outward pull. Yes, it starts within me, but I know that it is an extension. I'm supposed to give it out. I'm hearing the information, translating the information, but I very well know that it's not resonating for me in that moment, that I am to give it over to somebody else. And we call that a, a psychic pull, a, a mediumship pull where I am looking around uh, living people and I am feeling the energy that surrounds them. And that's your, uh, the example that you're talking about is uh, I was in a room of about 200 people doing those readings and uh, pizza kept coming at me. Now there was no pizza in the room and nothing was around, but I knew that I was being pulled towards this family sitting at a table and they wound up uh, having a father that had passed and they had all owned pizza restaurants. So it came, it was very clear. Yeah. Wow. And that's just my full trust in uh, what my guides and spirit does with me. And that took a lot of practice and a lot of classes to get that down. And when you learn that and you just think you're able to discern the difference, uh, that's just me honing in on the abilities that I've been given and, and sharing it with others. It's a lot of practice. Well, I think that's amazing. And it was so funny how you said uh, in the book, you were like, and in the past, I maybe would have just left here and gone and gotten a pizza, but because you trusted it, you were like, okay, I'm going to go up to these people. I'm going to talk to them and I'm going to, you know, yeah. go out on a limb, so to speak. And, and, uh, and it ended up really helping them and giving them the comfort that they needed. Uh, will you tell us a little bit more about how spirit can speak to, in so many different ways, the different mm -hmm. clairs? Yes. I learned that listening to spirit wasn't always just hearing them. Uh, you know, so spirit comes in your own voice. That was a life-changing sentence for me, that it's not something that's outside of ourselves going, hello, Marianne, pay attention. You know, it's really more of that inner voice and that our loved ones on the other side, whether I'm reading them for myself or somebody else, come along the same way. And you should use all of the senses when you are making connection with spirit or looking to connect, what, whether it's for yourself or if you're a budding medium, whether it's fathers. So you want to pay attention, attention to, yes, your clear audience of hearing, but your clear buoyancy too. What are you seeing like a slideshow in your mind? Your dreams are a great, great way to pay attention to your clairvoyancy as well. It's great accents, uh, accent access for that. Your clear sentience, what am I feeling? Everybody says, oh, I've gotten chills. Mm -hmm. oh, did you, uh, you know, right. Chills, goosebumps, yes. of confirmation. They call that your clair aliens, your clair gustins. What am I tasting? What am I smelling? Ooh. 
right? So I smelled that pizza. I could mm-hmm. taste it. I was like, wow, this is delicious. I, you know, I want some pizza. And mm-hmm. oftentimes people talk about smelling flowers, uh, smelling cigarette smoke. If My mom uh, talks about with, that. Right? Her yeah. grandmother, she would smell the, smoke or, mm-hmm, smell the mm-hmm. flowers. And I always remember thinking, huh, like when I was a little kid, like that's interesting. But yeah. as I've gotten older and learned to trust it more, it's like you realize that this stuff is real and you can trust it and be open. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And my most favorite Claire is the Claire cognizance, the inner knowing that knowing that not only are you tapping in, but that energy is there for you. That spirit is there for you. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's one of the most important Claire's. What I love about what you're saying about your mom is that she's not questioning it. She is not only using what she could smell, but she knows her inner knowing knows that that is her grandmother. Grandmother, you said, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And that's, that's so beautiful that she doesn't walk away going, Oh, you know, I left the window open and the spring flowers mm-hmm. were creating. She's just saying, Nope, that's my grandma. And I know it. Yeah. I beautiful. grew up in that environment for sure, where everyone was very open to that. And so, yes, it was really Same. cool to see Same, you too. Yeah. Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm-hmm. My mom was like, yes, of course you see dead people. <laughs> and Speaking of dreams, like my childhood dog will come to me in dreams. And the reason I know it's real is because I will like pet her head and I'll wake up and it's like Mm -hmm. something that I have not thought of in, I don't know, in years and years and years. And I'll have this vivid like memory when I wake up, I'll be like, oh my gosh, like the back of her neck. It's like a photograph in my mind. And I was just petting it. It, Like, and that happens multiple times. Like, I don't know. It'll happen once a month. Pets are fascinating. You know, they can absolutely communicate with us. Uh, mine, I, I remember my childhood once I used to run around my bed because they were poodles, you know, and they would, and I would feel them like running around my bed. Um, I lost a dog before the one that I have now. Um, mm. And he used to, uh, he showed up in like full apparition, like in my kitchen. This is before I was doing that work. And it was really for a split second. You're like, hello, I, okay. Yeah, but I, was, I remember going, whoa. Like what, what was I that, bet. you know? Yeah, it was really cool. And he would show up in my dreams sometimes as well. And are, you know, our pets are really spiritual and they're part of our soul pack. They're part of our family. And people ask me all the time about accessing their pets. And yes, just like you go in with your loved one in meeting hours in heaven, absolutely invite your pets to come through because you will hear them uh, in our language, in our voice, they'll happily communicate and let you know that they're okay. Oh my, I love that. See, this is just so wonderful. And the more that we can, you know, this, like you said, the, the veil is getting thinner Mm -hmm. and I think some people get a little bit apprehensive about that, but it's really so amazing. And there's so much love that we can access so much light. Uh, Is there anything else that you would like people to know and to understand about being more open to these gifts, being more trusting of their intuition? Because I mean, you do speak about in the book how some people will say, oh, this is crazy or whatever. It's just not really something we're comfortable with yet in society. So how can we get that out there more? When you start to trust, just be aware that you're going to have moments of mistrust. Okay. That it's going to continue to show up. A, a lot of people who get into the spiritual work are saying, oh, I'm still afraid. I shouldn't be afraid anymore. Or I shouldn't have doubt anymore. No, 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 no. We're in the human realm and we are learning. This is a massive school. And part of that school is going to be our doubts and our fears and all the lessons that come along with it. The idea of leaning into the space is not to eradicate all of that in our lives. It's that when it does show up, we have the tools to work through them, that this is kind of like comprehensive care in our lives. This is a tool for us to use to figure this whole crazy world out in the best way that we can and authentically us. And I think to me, that's a bit of surrendering. It's kind of a relief to a lot of people that I work with that, oh, I could still be myself and do this work. Yes, be authentically you, trust everything that comes along with that, good, bad, and different, and just stay consistent in it. And I promise you, you will create a spiritual practice that serves you very well for the rest of your life. 100%. And who do you think this book is right for? For everybody who is interested, called, compelled, who is this book right for? And what can people take away from it and learn from it? I hope it's, I hope it's for anyone who is interested in learning more about tapping in. And if it's calling to you, please say yes. Uh, That's, that's what I'm hoping is that when you look at the book and you think, I think I'm supposed to read that book that you say yes to it and know that spirit's talking to you through it. And I hope it serves you really well. 100%. And this show airs at one 11 in the morning. So if you are up watching this uh-huh. right now, then 
you guys, it's just take the sign and go with it. <laughs> Marianne, where can people follow you, find you, work with you, stay in touch? Give I us all am, the deets. I'm on social media at Marianne the Medium. And my website is MarianneDemarco.com. And all the information of how we can connect is on my website. Amazing. Well, Marianne, you are a delight. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us at BZN TV. We really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. For the full interview, just check out the Bees in with Brit podcast. <laughs>